Mo Davidson from The Bo Show. We are live at CPAC 2023 right here at Gaylord National in Washington, D.C. After about a four-year hiatus from being down in Florida and COVID, but we're now back in D.C. There's a lot of great speakers that are going to be here this weekend from Tulsi Gabbard to Nikki Haley to Donald J. Trump. So we are here with Epoch Times, Epoch TV, NTD Live. It's going to be a fabulous three days. So here we are at the Epoch Times and NTD booth right here. We've got a lot of exciting guests that are going to be stopping by over the next three days. We have a great position right across the hall from where everything's going to be happening. Take a look in here. That's the main convention hall where we're going to have Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Nikki Haley, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, some amazing speakers. So please stop on by our booth right here, Epoch Times and NTD. Come see us. So we've got a great new documentary called The Shadow State. I've got a ticket. It's going to be Friday at Gaylord Room 14, National Harbor 14. And to talk about it, we've got, guess what, Yanya Kelly. Yanya, tell us about this documentary. ESG is basically, you could think of it like the economic engine that's driving the whole, if you want to call it, wokeification of society. And Kevin Stockland here in The Shadow State in our documentary essentially describes how that works. So The Shadow State is going to be Friday, March 3rd, 3 to 5 p.m., National Harbor, Room 14, limited seating. Come on by. Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. The opening clip that you just saw was a little teaser that we did at CPAC at Gaylord National Harbor in the D.C. area last week. In a general sense, this year's CPAC lacked the energy that many of the conferences past have offered. As I pondered why that might be, I think that the absence of some big draws had something to do with this such as the very youth-inspiring Senator Rand Paul. Trump is the big draw, but he's always the last speaker on the last day, which makes the previous three days pale in comparison. Other notables, such as Glenn Beck, Charlie Kirk, and Tucker Carlson were conspicuously absent. These are the speakers that people want to hear. Ron DeSantis was absent due to a previously scheduled event, and that may have been just bad timing. But it certainly didn't help CPAC's energy. Jim Newell of Slate called it the saddest CPAC ever using the following description. Picture yourself in a dark grand ballroom of a Marriott conference center on a late winter Saturday in business casual dress. You're finishing watching your 16th consecutive speech of the day since 8.30 a.m. about the need to fight against the rhinos. You get a break and go to the atrium market pick up a soggy chicken Caesar salad wrap, and eat by yourself on a bench. You wander around the vendor area to look at Trump apparel and investment opportunities for gold or cryptocurrency, and then take the escalator back up. Through the high paned glass windows, you look vacantly at the brownish gray Potomac River and an empty Ferris wheel. It's an uninteresting temperature outside, 47 degrees, you go back to the grand ballroom and sit for four more hours. You paid hundreds of dollars for this. You're an attendee of the Conservative Political Action Conference. And this year, there are a lot fewer of you. I hate to say it, but Newell is spot on in his account. CPAC's return to Gaylord National, an expensive, isolated resort tucked well away from the monuments and Smithsonian's of DC, is overpriced and underwhelming. It's not the place college kids want to go, nor can afford. If they had had the conference anywhere near a Jimmy John's, there would have been record sales, and Jimmy John could have spoken. Maybe Kid Rock and Jason Aldean could have stopped by. In spite of my exuberance in that opening video, it was early, and I had not yet been inside or seen the vibe of the conference hall. Needless to say, Tepid applause and 20 speakers and panels in a row did not motivate many attendees. The real action was outside the hall in Media Row, where booths have become action centers. It's where many of the guest speakers come to be interviewed, like I and many of my NTD and Epoch colleagues conducted this year. Steve Bannon had a large public address stage set up in one corner where he was very loudly broadcasting his show live. And he seemed to create the energy scene that was lacking within CPAC's main event stage. You see, what Democrats do really well 
is make use of the entertainers that support them. Even if the policy or the person being heralded is total crap, like James Taylor singing about climate change or Olivia Rodrigo and the Jonas Brothers pushing vaccines at the White House, they utilize their cultural influencers. It may be forced, and in Biden's case, really forced, but at least they make use of what they have. They know that people like to be entertained. Trump mixes entertainment with information, what you might call edutainment. Charlie Kirk's Turning Point USA has overtaken CPAC in terms of its energy, entertainment value, and attendance. For quite some time now, CPAC has delved into this boring, drawn-out dirge that lacks excitement. Donald Trump rallies usually feature a curated playlist by Trump himself that ranges from the Village People's YMCA to memory from the Broadway show Cats. Even though those performances are not live performances, at least he understands the value of music. CPAC somehow misses this. And like I said, the energy is actually found in Media Row. I actually wanted to write a piece of original music that would touch on the various speakers that would be at CPAC, along with what the conservative movement is supposed to be about, this big tent where it doesn't matter if you're black, brown, or white, it's all about the red, white, and blue. So when my colleague Steve Lance interviewed Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, I asked if I could premiere my little tune for her, since she's mentioned in it. This is how it went. It's the Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC, CPAC. Love Trump or DeSantis makes no difference, CPAC, CPAC. Make some moves and find your groove at CPAC, CPAC. Black, brown, or white, it's red, white, and blue at CPAC, CPAC. They got senators and congressmen ripping your district, Gates, Lauren, Boebert, and MTG. Ted Cruz, Blackburn, and then Nikki Haley, and don't forget Kerry Lake and Tulsi. It's gonna be a party. Cause it's conservative political action conference at CPAC. The Trump or DeSantis makes no difference. CPAC, CPAC. Make some moves and find your groove. It's CPAC, CPAC. Black, brown, and white, it's red, white, and blue. It's CPAC, CPAC. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being such a good sport. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, take a look at this angle, which shows the small crowd that we drew. This is what I mean by creating the energy that was lacking inside the main hall. You have to create it for yourself. There were no exciting concerts to go to after each day would end. So you're left with a loud atrium and expensive hotel price drinks. I paid $6.50 for a monster energy drink. And you mill around with the hope that you know, Carrie Lake might pop in, and she actually did. She will take time to talk to people and take photos. Other speakers or congressmen feel too cool for school to do this. And I'll say this about megastar Taylor Swift. I don't like her politics and I don't particularly care for her music, but I have to hand it to her that she takes time for her fans. She will take photos and sign autographs till time runs out. Congress could learn from this. You are never too good to meet your constituents and your fans. Even James O'Keefe, who was in the middle of a big dispute with Project Veritas, walked through the halls and talked to people. Personally, for my part, I really enjoyed getting to talk to people who are fans of this show and of Epoch and NTD content. What they value is our pursuit of truth. It's hard to trust news outlets, and many outlets can be too right-wing, where the confirmation bias is just too strong. We have carnival barkers on both the left and the right. Make no mistake about it. However, you can be both informative and compelling or even entertaining at the same time. The problem is that the CPAC establishment, which of course is part of a greater GOP establishment, lacks innovation. They think of the emotional connection last. 
We can talk policy till we are blue in the face, but until you make a human connection with someone and go heart to heart, it doesn't really matter. That's why I say that the format of 16 speakers in a row without a break is not the best lineup. Think of it like a football game. You need a pregame tailgate. You need an exciting kickoff, a great halftime show, a third quarter surprise, and a riveting finish. CPAC just did not have that, and the venue was just as unexciting. At least in Orlando, you had Disney and Universal if you wanted to go, and some great weather. DC is stuffy, always has been. It's cold and rainy this time of year too. Something that was innovative, however, was a new dating app for conservatives called The Right Stuff. Now, I didn't expect anyone from this app to be on hand at CPAC, certainly wasn't on our schedule, because they were not speaking. But as I learned that Silicon Valley giant Peter Thiel was the backer of this app, I found this to be a compelling prospect. Keep watching at epochtv.com forward slash The Bow Show.